We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will have, we were already with the listening ear to hear those words, Heavenly Father, come from uh, your, your servant, Dr. Hare, which has been left upon the page of inspiration. Go with us, guide us, and direct us, Heavenly Father, and all those things that's lawful and right as we continue on a continual basis to study your holy and your divine word. We ask these blessings in his name, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let everyone say amen. Amen and amen. And welcome again to Wednesday Night Live at Home with the Word as we continue to push back darkness utilizing what thus says the Lord. And I need you to be as the Bereans, the Bible says. They were more noble than those at Thessalonica. Why? Because they received the word of God with all readiness of mind. And, and they searched the scriptures daily to make sure the things they were being taught were in fact what God had to say. Now, and I add a caveat to that by saying it's time for us to study. To show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Tonight, I want to continue where we left off from Sunday. And I, I want to start off by saying that the confusion around whether or not we should drink wine, alcoholic beverage, uh, during the Lord's Supper or during our communion service is an antiquated idea, concept, and argument. The Bible lets me know, first of all, God never referred to or used the term wine in relationship to the Lord's Supper or the communion. You will notice it will always be the cup or the fruit of the vine. And we looked at that on Sunday and want to close that out this evening. So if you have your Bibles, go to Acts chapter 2. I want to begin to hit the ground and run for just a little while. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, uh, and then uh, I want to start at verse number 1. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. As we lay out the word of God, we need to identify several pieces uh, of information. On Wednesday night is our time to respond to questions and also build or scaffold on the word of God. So again, I want to repeat by saying never do, does God use the term wine and, and brothers are mistaken when they on the table on the communion table and they and they identify uh, the cup as wine is not in that respect never used in terms of the communion or the Lord's Supper. Now, let me pick up where I needed to pick up from Sunday in Acts chapter two. I want to start at verse number one because I want to highlight something. Remember, we said that Jesus told his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed in Acts in Matthew 26 and verse 26 through 30. He said, I would not eat with you again until I eat with you new in my father's kingdom. So I'm going to show you that the kingdom started on the day of Pentecost, number one, and we were added to the kingdom. I'm going to show you that we have already received the kingdom. I'm going to show you that God's apostles were already in the kingdom and we've been added to them that were in the kingdom that makes us in the kingdom. So when we commune, we are communing with Jesus Christ every Lord's day. Now, Acts chapter two, verse number one, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost now, was fully come, letting you know what day we're talking about. We're talking about the day of Pentecost. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse number 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, I want to show you what happened on the day of Pentecost when Pentecost had fully come. Drop down to verse number 38. The Bible says, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The Bible says, then Peter said unto them. Now, now, now the them are those in Acts 38. We see the them. The them are those that are asking about what they have to do to be saved. Now, remember, the apostles are already in the kingdom. They're already in the church. So when I use the word church, I use the words church and kingdom interchangeably. 
when I say the kingdom of God, I'm talking about the kingdom of God's dear son. When I talk about the kingdom of God's father, I'm talking about the father's kingdom, which is the church of Christ. Now, the Bible says in verse 38, then Peter said unto them. So then Peter said unto them. Repent. Repent and, and be, be baptized, baptized every one, one, of, one you of you. In for, the name of Jesus Christ. For. For the remission, remission of, of sin. sins. Now, now. So they have a requirement. So in order to have this communion, I have to first establish a relationship. When I establish that relationship, I establish that relationship through baptism. Baptism is what puts me into relationship with God. And when I'm in relationship with God and I obey God's word, then am I in fellowship with him. See, I can't be in fellowship with him if I'm not obeying his word. And I'm going to show you that <clears throat> this relationship and this fellowship go hand in hand. So those that, those that were baptized... Were, um, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, hit verse uh, 38 again. Then Peter said, then unto, Peter said unto them, them repent, repent and, and be baptized. baptized. So Every that, one of you. So that established my relationship. Right. Now, in verse number 41, the Bible says, Then they that, then they gladly, that gladly received now watch the this, word. Now watch this. See, in order to be baptized, I have to what? Receive, receive the, the word. word. And one of the proofs of my receiving the word is that I obey the word that I receive. When I obey the word that I receive, I'm going to be baptized. Now, when I'm baptized and I obey God after that point, that's where I have fellowship with him. Read the Bible. The Bible says. And what? <clears throat> and what? Mm -hmm. 40. And with many other words. Verse 41. 41. 41. Mm -hmm. Then they that gladly received, received word, his word were, were baptized. Now, and the same and day, the same day, there were added unto them. Now, 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 this them joins this them that is in the church. Right. So the them that asked the question, "What must we do to be saved?" To be saved is to have this relationship. Right. To have this relationship, one must be in fellowship. They go hand in hand. They are reciprocal in the sense that I can't have one without the other. I can't have a relationship without having fellowship, and I can't have fellowship without having a relationship. So once them asked the question, what must we do to be saved, it was told them what they had to do. And when them received the word with all readiness of mind, I want to show you this. The Bible says, read on. Uh, Verse 41. Okay. Let me, then they that were gladly baptized. Then they that, then they that received the word. Received was, the word. His, his word mm -hmm. were baptized. Were baptized. The and same day. Same day. That were added unto to them. them about 3,000 now, souls. Now, now the them are the apostles. Right. And added to the apostles that day was another 3,000 souls. So the kingdom is established the kingdom came into existence on the day of Pentecost right. if the kingdom and the church is the same thing and they are they came into existence at the same time now I want to show you something in verse number 42 the Bible says and they continue and they can then they that the them which is here are now the they and they are now with the them that are in the church. Right. And the them that make up the church are all those that are saved. Why? Because all the saved are them that are where? In the church. In the church. And the church is the kingdom that comprises and is composed of all of them that are saved. <clears throat> and them that are saved have both a relationship and know. fellowship with Jesus Christ. Now, I can't have one without the other. Finish to read. The Bible says. And they, that, and they continue steadfastly in, in the, the apostles' doctrine, doctrine and, and in fellowship and, and in breaking, breaking of bread and in prayer. Now, 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 that's the spiritual relationship that we have. That's the relationship. 
that prompts my fellowship. Now, all those that have a relationship through baptism, look at what God does for them in verse 47. The Bible says, praising, praising God, praising God, and, and having, having favor, favor with, with all, all the people. people. Now, watch this. And well, the Lord. You always hear me say, you don't join, God adds. Amen. All right? Because if you join, you may end up anywhere. But if God add you, you will be where you need to be. Right. And that's where all the saved are. And that's among them that are in the church that you can read about in the Bible, the word of God. There's only one church, and that first century church is the church of the Bible. And the Bible says, It says, I'm praising God, God and, and having, having favor, favor with, with all, all the people, people and the Lord, the Lord added to, to the, the church, church daily, daily, such as should be saved. Daily, such as should be saved. Now, I need you to see a couple of things. When we commune, when we commune, I need you to understand and relate to three things. When we commune, we look up, we look in, and we look back. We look up, we look in, and we look back. We look up and we give thanks for the sacrifice Jesus has committed for his death and for his suffering. Because without his death, without his sacrifice, without his suffering, without his willingness to step out and to seek and to save the lost through his sacrifice, we would be eternally lost. And when I look back, I need to look back at his death and suffering. Now, when I look back at his death and suffering, I go back to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verses uh, 17 through 30. But the emphasis that we'll be dealing with is on verse 26 through 30. We're looking at the pending cross because Jesus is getting ready to do what? To go to the cross. Before he gets to the cross, his suffering starts because his suffering started in the Garden of Gethsemane. And from the Garden of Gethsemane, from courtroom to courtroom, and all the way to the cross, he suffered, bled, and died. Now, when I say look in, I need you to look within yourself. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 5, the Bible says, examine yourself and see if you are in the faith. And then he says, prove it. Because remember now, I have to have a what? Relationship, and I have to be what? In fellowship in order to commune with Jesus. Now, and Jesus communes with those that have a relationship and are in fellowship every Lord's day. Because he said, I will eat with you anew in my Father's kingdom. So when we examine ourselves, I'm checking to make sure I'm in a proper relationship with God. I'm also checking myself to see if there's any sins that would stand between me and God in my fellowship that would, that, that would deprive me of my relationship. Because if my relationship ain't right through baptism and my fellowship is not right through disobedience, then I'll be eating and drinking damnation to myself, not discerning the Lord's body. So when I talk about Jesus, is in the fellowship of our communion because it's predicated on the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. Now, if you would go to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 28. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 28. I want to show you something. Then from there we're going to Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13. Colossians 1 13. But I want to stop first at Hebrews chapter 12 and I need to show you something that 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 we have already received the kingdom. If we have not received the kingdom then Jesus could not be fellowshipping with us. He could not be eating anew with us. He could not be in that relationship with us. So Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 28 the Bible says what? The Bible says, now, now, now watch this. The Bible says, wherefore, we receive a kingdom. Watch this. Watch this. He says, we received. In other words, that means we already have it. All right. We don't pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Always thy will be done in the kingdom. 
because the kingdom is already here. The kingdom is present. We have already received the kingdom. And remember, he said that we, he won't eat again until he eat anew in the kingdom. The kingdom has already been received. Remember, John said he was, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. All right, if he was in the spirit on the, on the Lord's day, he was already in relationship. He was already in fellowship with Jesus Christ. So, first of all, we have already received the kingdom. And only those that can commune with Jesus are those that are in the kingdom because we are recipients of the kingdom that started on the day of Pentecost back in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1. Now I need you to go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 13. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 13. And then from there I'm going to John chapter 3. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 13. Colossians chapter 1. Who have delivered us? Now watch this. Now, now there's a who there. That who there is Jesus Christ. The who there is Jesus. Because only Jesus can deliver us. Only yes, Jesus can save us. Only Jesus can bring us from darkness into the marvelous light. So the Bible says, who have delivered us, delivered from, us the power of darkness from the power of darkness and have translated, translated us, us into, into the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of God's dear, dear son. son. So God has what? Translated us into the kingdom. So that means not only have we received the kingdom, we are what? In the kingdom. And if we are in the kingdom, we commune with God every Lord's Day, which is every first day of the week, which is every Sunday. Now, we know the word Sunday, the name Sunday, the term Sunday is not a biblical term. It's not found in the scripture. The Bible says on the first day of the week. Everything about Jesus after his resurrection was the first day of the week. Everything about the church after it was established for its worship was the first day of the week. When we talk about the communion, it was the first day of the week. Now, let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse number 3, and let's see how we get there. John chapter 3, verse number 3 four and five. I need you to listen to this carefully because <clears throat> Jesus has limited, in other words, he has limited this fellowship. He has restricted this relationship to those that are in the kingdom. And if I'm not in the kingdom, I cannot have this relationship, nor can I be in fellowship with him. So the Bible says in John three, Beginning at verse number three, listen to the to the dialogue, the discourse between Jesus and Nicodemus. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto Jesus him, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say, verily, unto verily, thee, I say unto thee, except a man except be born a man. again. So, other words, remember, I said that relationship established on me being what baptized now jesus tell nicodemus in the beginning except the man is what born, born again, again he cannot see the now kingdom he says of God. not only can you not enter he says you can't to see it is to have a relationship with it to see it is to be in fellowship with it to see it is to be in it he says you cannot even see the kingdom of god now let me move just a little bit further and, and answer another question. <clears throat> uh, let's pick up. There are 13 scriptures. There are 13 scriptures uh, that allude to communion. So when I said 13 scriptures, I'm talking about 13 passages that are found in the Bible that allude to uh, the scriptures, all right, uh, that teach about the communion. Now, if I go to John chapter 6, beginning at verse number 53 through verse 58. Listen to what the Bible has to say. In John chapter 6, verse number 53. I want to start at verse number 53, and we're going to go right on through because I need you to see what Jesus is saying as we allude to the communion. In John chapter 6, and verse number 53, 
Listen to the Bible, the word of God. The Bible says. Then Jesus said unto them. Then Jesus said unto verily, them. Verily, I say unto you. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Except ye eat the, eat except the flesh, eat the flesh of, the of the Son of Man. Of man and, and drink, drink his, his blood, blood. Ye have no life in you. Other words, why? Because outside of God, outside of Christ, we are dead. Right. And if we are dead, dead folk don't have relationships. No, sir. It is impossible. Dead folk are not in fellowship with anybody because they're dead. Why? Because death is a separation. And if death is a separation, in other words, my relationships with those that are here, my fellowship with those that are here, stop. And if it stops here at the grave, if I don't have a relationship beyond that, then I'm dead. So Jesus said, except you do what? I got to eat. He says, except you eat of my flesh. And then he says, except you drink of my blood. He says, you have no, no, life, no life in, in you. you. In other words, you're dead without Christ. In other words, the Bible says you're dead in your trespasses and in sin. sin. Yes, and if sir. you're dead in your trespasses and sin, that means you are separated from God. And if you separate it from God, all the relationships stop. The Bible says that if you, after, after, after knowing God to sin willfully, God says in his word, there is no more what? Sacrifice, sin, sacrifice all right, for, sin. for your sin. So uh, that takes me, and let's move on. Let's look at another passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 26. Where the Bible says, for as oft, for as oft, or as for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Now, often. Everybody get hung up on often. Now, remember, God would never tell you what to do, how to do, when to do and then not show you someone doing it. God will never tell you to do something and not tell you what it is you're doing, how to do it, when to do it, and show you someone doing it. And we see that, and I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to go all the way to Acts 20 and verse number 7 right away, but we see the proof text in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7. For as often as ye eat this bread... And drink this cup. He says, you do do what? Show forth his death. Why? Because remember now, when we, when we commune, we are supposed to think about what? His suffering and his death till. Till what? Till he comes again. Now, so that lets me know in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So that means I'm going to do this till he comes. All right, and that's how long we're going to commune until he comes. Then I see in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse number 24 through 27, and when he had given thanks... He breaked it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So whenever we commune, we, we were doing, it's a, it's a uh, uh, commemoration. Uh, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a showing that we remember the sacrifice, the suffering, and the death of Jesus Christ. So it's a commemoration. In other words, it's a memorial uh, reflecting back on who? Jesus Christ. So every time I commune, I think back about the sacrifice. I think back about the death. I think back about the suffering. I think about the price Jesus paid that I was unable and could not, ne I could never pay the price. Mm -hmm. Now, in Luke chapter 22, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says, and he took bread and gave thanks and breaked it and gave and gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is what? 
which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. So in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. We understand that when we commune, because of the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, we do it what? In remembrance of him. Because of the fellowship we maintain with Jesus Christ, we continue to remember. When you have fellowship, you remember what established the relationship. I'm going to say it again. When you have fellowship, you remember what established the relationship. And if you remember what's established the relationship, that's the cement. That's what seal you together. In other words, in other words, we 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 sign sealed and delivered. And when I recognize every Lord's Day when I partake of the communion, the Lord's Supper, when I partake of the body and the and the cup that represents his shedded blood, I can't help but think back of the sacrifice that Jesus committed and made for me. The Bible says, now while I'm there, while I'm there, he says, but let a man do what? Examine himself. In other words, I need to take a look at myself and make sure I'm right. I have, I'm right in this relationship, that I have fellowship. And let me tell you something. Just showing up for communion does not establish relationship nor fellowship. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But notice what he said. You only eat and drink after you examine yourself. What am I doing? I'm showing you the 13 passages in the Bible, the word of God, that alludes to or refer to the communion. Now we have in Matthew 26, beginning at verse number 26, the Bible says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, breaked it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. All right. And then in John chapter six, verse 53, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood. Ye have no life in you. Now, that brings me to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 42. In Acts 2, 42, the Bible says, Then, and, and, and they, and they, and they, being the they, those, they are the them that obeyed him on the day of Pentecost and was added unto them that was already part of the kingdom. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and breaking of bread. The communion is also referred to as the breaking of bread. In other words, we break bread. That's not the common meal because you don't need to teach me how to do a common meal, but you need to teach me how to have that fellowship because that's the apostles' doctrine. So the apostles' doctrine includes uh, and coordinating, coordinating conjunction fellowship and coordinating conjunctions breaking of bread and coordinating conjunction in prayers. And then I have 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 through 29. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, what do you think that means when he says shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord? Inside or outside, what do, you, what do you think he means when he says that anyone who eat unworthily, all right, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord? All right, guilty means, yeah, one is that if you're guilty, you, you, you already eating out of what? Fellowship. And if you're eating out of fellowship, you have no relationship because the relationship is predicated on what? Willing to do what? Obey. And if I obey, I can continue in that what? Fellowship. All right. What, does it, what else does it mean to be guilty of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ? What do we, we think it means to be guilty? All right. Uh, Brother Norton says it sounds like kind of sound like you're condemned 
In other words, the body is condemning you. The blood is condemning you. Why? Because you're eating out of relationship. You're eating out of fellowship. Somebody else help me out. What else does that mean? If you're in sin. Say again. If you're in sin. Now, if I'm in sin. Sin states that I don't have a relationship. All right. Sin states I don't have fellowship. Why? Because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears open to their prayers. But his face is against them that do what evil. And the Bible says sin separates us from God. So that's why I'm to examine myself and make sure I'm right with God all the time. Because otherwise, I'll be eating and drinking damnation to myself, not discerning. In other words, because, watch this, God comes to dwell in a, what, clean temple. God cannot dwell in any unclean place. And remember, no two things can occupy the same space at the same time. So either I'm right with God, and God is able to come in, or I'm not right with God, and God is not able to come in. And if God is not there, it's because I don't have a relationship nor fellowship with him. Because I'm separated from him. Now, let's look at another passage in John chapter 6. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse number 51. John chapter 6. And listen to what Jesus is saying. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall, he shall live how? Forever. Forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I give <laughs> for the life of the world. So watch this. So that lets me know that this bread, the bread gives me life. But I must eat of the bread in order to have what? Life. All right. Now, in order to have life, I got to eat of it. But I can't eat of it if I don't have a relationship and if I'm not in fellowship. Because if I eat of it and I don't have relationship or fellowship, then I'm eating and drinking what? Damnation to my own self. In other words, I'm damned. In other words, I damn myself. All right. Why? Because... I, because what God did for me is more than just lip service. It's more than just showing up, sipping through a cup, or chewing down on a cracker. So the Bible says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. In other words, remember now what he's saying, to live forever, that means I'm going to continue in the word. Remember now, if I continue in the word, remember after I matter of fact, go to uh, Revelation chapter two, verse seven, Revelation chapter two, verse number seven. Quickly, I want to hit verse seven and, and maybe I want to touch on base uh, verse 10 as well. Uh, I want to show you something. Revelation chapter two, verse seven. And I want to hit 10 as a launching pad for my next piece. Revelation chapter two, verse seven. The Bible says. Revelations chapter 2, verse number 7. Mm -hmm. He that has an ear, let him now hear. Now watch this. The Bible says, he that has an ear, do what? Let him hear. In other words, you, you have a responsibility to hear what God has to say. And watch this now. When I don't hear what God has to say, I'm saying I'm not willing to what? Obey, because to hear God is to what? Obey God. And if I obey God, then I establish that relationship that I'm talking about. And then if I continue to obey him, I maintain what? Fellowship. Because fellowship is based on a what? Continuation of my obedience of the word. Read on. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The Bible to says, To him that overcometh mm -hmm. will I give to eat mm -hmm. of the tree of life, mm -hmm. which is in the midst of the paradise of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And unto the angel of the church of Samaria, now, right? Now, now, now hit, hit verse 10. 
Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Now watch this, watch this. Now, 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 he says, now, remember now, he says, if you eat, you have what? Eternal life. So now he says in verse 10, don't sweat, don't worry about those things because you're going to have some hard times. And see, a lot of times when people obey the gospel, a lot of times when people are added to the body of Christ, a lot of times when people become, quote, quote, unquote, church members, they think all their problems are over. No, baby girl, that's when your problems start hitting you dead smack in the face because what you didn't used to think about, you're now thinking about it because it's confronting you, you know, um, I, and you have nowhere. See, when you were outside of Christ, you had nowhere to place your blame. When you're inside of Christ, you think, oh, man, you know, God, God, God ain't doing this. God ain't doing that because same stuff, same stuff been happening to you all the time. All right. But now it's happening to you, but it's happening to you as a child of God. And God said, if it happened to you, I got you. You ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to sweat it. Watch this. The Bible says. Fear none of those things which thou hast suffered. He says, fear none of those things that you you have suffered, will suffer, and going to suffer. Watch this. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now, most of our problem is Satan. Mm -hmm. Most of our problem is Satan. Uh, Let me tell you something. Uh, COVID-19. Let me just drop drop a dime on you um <laughs> satan is is sanitizing the lord's church why because satan is using COVID 19 to give you excuses for not attending worship for not coming to bible class for not being a part of the fellowship and if you're not part of the fellowship it's going to be difficult for you to maintain and justify a relationship it, that's the and, and and he knows that so what he what, what he's doing he is, he is upping the ante on COVID, knowing that he can pull you away from God. See, because without fellowship, without interaction, without Bible study, without worship, there's a weakening of the spirit. And, 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 and I ain't got time, but I just wanted to just drop that on you. Uh, read the article in the bulletin for this Sunday, and I will be addressing that. Uh, 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 Satan is, 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 is doing it. Where, where has all uh, the Christians gone? Long time passing. In other words, you know, devil pull them out, pull them by the side, and they're going. Well, anyway, uh, the Bible says in verse 10. Um, that ye may be tried, and he, he says ye you, shall have tribulations 10 days. Okay, and? Be thou faithful unto he says, death, now, now, and I you, will give. You got a responsibility to be faithful. Not, not just faithful, but faithful until. All right, now, now, all right, you got a responsibility to be faithful unto death. And then watch what he says, and my, my reward comes after life. But I got to pay a price for this life. The Bible says, and I will give thee a crown and of life. And I will give you a crown of life. Who don't, who don't see that? He says, but you got to weather the storm. Now, let me, let me hasten. Uh, in John 6, 33, for the bread of God is he which, what? Cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So we know the bread is who? Jesus Christ. All right. And that's why he says, this is my body that is broken for you. Now, in Isaiah 53, in verse number five, is another one of those 13 passages that alludes to the communion or the Lord's Supper. And and as we added another one, breaking of bread. Now, Isaiah 53 and verse five, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed and 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 uh i'm going to uh sunday i'm going to show you that that well i'll wait till sunday all right now in luke 24 30 the bible says and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread blessed it breaked it and gave it to him what am i doing i'm showing you the 13 passages uh, that alludes to what the Lord's Supper or communion. And that's what we've been dealing with 
at this particular point. Now, watch this. Uh, I hope y'all can see my illustration. Many are taking the Lord's Supper under false pretense. I'm going to say it again. There's a whole bunch of folk that are taking or partaking of the Lord's Supper with false pretense. Our hands are not clean. In other words, have you heard the brothers when they when they pray, they says, Lord, you know, uh, let us take this with what? Uh, clean hands and a pure heart. Uh, you, you, you've heard brothers say that. And, 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 and many times folk that are communing hands are not clean. They are still in sin. That's why the Bible says examine yourself. All right. Why? Because you'll be messing around. You'll be eating and drinking damnation to yourself. Now watch this. There, comment. All right. We have unrepented sin in our life. When you commune, that's why the Bible says you better check yourself out. All right. You cannot sit here in sin and commune saying that you have fellowship with God. Why? Because sin separates you from God. And you have this false pretense that everything is okay and God is pleased. We have taken advantage of God's good grace, his mercy, and his long suffering. How can you week after week not get your life right when God has been good to you? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like God blesses you to work every day. Work every day, all right? But you come up with an excuse on Sunday why, why you can't worship, all right? Uh, what is it? Does, does God bless us too much? Are the blessings God give us too plentiful? Uh, is, is he over, over blessing us? Is God too good to us in giving us all the things we ask for all week? And then we still, on Sunday, we don't have enough ump to come to worship, get up out of bed. And we use all, and, and you, all of us are familiar with the various excuses that we come up with for not doing what we know we ought to be doing. And we know you're not providentially hindered. We've already dealt with that because God will not put something in your way that will prevent you from worshiping him that he's commanded you to do. So that's an impossibility. So my question is, would God work you so much during, during the week that you don't have enough strength to worship him on Sunday? Would God bless you with so many things during the week that, that, that they're going to pull you away from God? Is your, is your parental responsibility so great during the week that you have to recover on Sunday? Now, what should we think about while partaking the Lord's Supper? In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 through 32, it identifies several things. But the question is, what should I think while partaking of the Lord's Supper? We know we should, what, remember his suffering and death. We should reflect back to the cross. There's that going back. In addition to considering the sacrifice of Christ, we are to consider the implications upon our lives. What have God done for me? And knowing how good God has been to me, how could I not be in fellowship with him on Sunday? How could I not have a relationship with him on Sunday so I can commune with him? I mean, he blessed me all week. He, he brought me through some storms. He carried me through the, oh, good God. And then I don't have enough to want a fellowship with him on Sunday morning. Something wrong with that picture. We are to judge ourselves. Are we partaking in a worthy manner? And then no one is worthy of the sacrifice of Christ. We have to understand that I'm still not, my, my best is like filthy rags in the sight of God. But when I sin willfully, there is no more sacrifice for sin. Remember that. Are we giving all diligence to follow and obey Christ. How can you say you're giving all diligence to following and obeying Christ when you won't even make time for Christ doing your quote unquote busy schedule? 
Talk to me when you can. Or is our commitment a half-hearted commitment? What does God have to do to get our attention? You know, COVID is pulling us out, driving us away. The devil's using that. Right? But God is still blessing us even in spite of COVID. Even in, even in the face of COVID, God is still blessing us. What was that? <laughs> Brother said, uh, if God stopped blessing us, maybe we'd get the point. Maybe we'd get the message. What does it take for us to realize how good God has been to us all week long and not to give him something on Sunday? I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like a brother hit a home run and he's rounding second base and he's coming around the third and he pulls a, a muscle. You know, the run don't count if he don't make it to home. That brother going to hobble himself. He's going to hop all the way in to home base. And then after he get there, then he'll check out, you know, all right, all right, uh, uh, team physician, check me out, make sure I'm all right. His football player broke his finger in the football game and, and couldn't get back, and they were going to take him out. He told, he told the brother, cut it off. Now, that's a bad brother. No, I ain't, ain't going to cut off no broke finger because I know a broke finger can be fixed. It can be. <laughs> no, I don't know how bad his was. I don't even know if that was a true story, but it was said that the football player wanted to get back in the game. He said, cut it off. How many of us are willing to get back in the game? We're willing to cut whatever it is off that's bothering us. God cut my sin off to start with. Am I willing to, to continue to cut it off? Now, by using the supper as an opportunity to reflect upon lives, we judge ourselves when? Now. It's better to judge yourself now than to have God judge you later. Because when I stand before God, it's over. There's no chance for me to rectify. There's no opportunity for me to correct the situation. I can't go back. I can't even say I'm sorry. It's too late. God said, depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. All right. So my time, that's why God said, you need to check yourself out. What now? Because there will come a time when it would be too late. We need to what? Repent of our sins, gain forgiveness through Christ's blood, and avoid the condemnation of God. Therefore, the supper serves as a time to focus on our priorities. What are your priorities? It ought to be, you know, it, it's, it's time that we stop being consumers and start being servants and servers are in the service of the Lord. Some people just come and suck up all they can get and keep it to themselves. God don't need you to be a consumer. He needs you to be a worker. There's a difference be between consuming everything. And we need to stop catering to folk. All they do is just suck up, suck up all the goodness, take all the blessings, you know, and never work, never serve God. Something wrong with that picture. Commitments and the direction we are taking in our life. You need to ask yourself what you're doing. Ask yourself what. Is what I'm doing helpful to the kingdom? Is what I'm doing giving any honor and glory to God? My attitude about what I'm doing, am I representing God's kingdom? Am I doing what God would be pleased with? Also, the supper serves as a means to proclaim the Lord's death till he come. It's important. Why? Because Christ said, I'm coming back. He says, and I'm coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. In addition to being a reflective memorial or, or memorial, both past and inward, it is a forward looking memorial that is to be observed until Christ's return. So that's like having a car note. You have to pay your car note until the car is paid off. Ask yourself, is there ever a time when you get a pass on paying your house note or your car note? Now, just because you didn't pay it didn't give you a pass because that payment didn't go away, did it? That payment is still there. So next month, you don't owe one payment. 
you owe two. And if you fail, then the next month you will owe three payments, not one. And if you're working with the right one, that's your last one. Three is the magic number. Repo. <laughs> the repo man will do you a job. Now, when we get ready to take the Lord's Supper today, Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, ask yourself what kind of life you have lived this week. When you sit down and participate in the Lord's Supper, ask yourself, what kind of life have you lived this week? Because remember now, I'm to examine myself. I'm to check myself out to make sure I'm worthy and that I'm not eating and drinking unworthily, that I'm reflecting on what Christ has done for me. So I'm going to examine my life and whether or not it's genuinely belonged to Christ. Now, in order to have this relationship, you got to belong to Christ. In order for those to be my children, they got to belong to me. In order for that to be my car, it's got to belong to me. If that was my boat, it's got to belong to me. If that's my house, it's got to belong to me. So if you don't belong to Christ, you don't have a relationship. And if you don't have a relationship, there is no fellowship and there is no communing with God. And if you don't commune with him, then there's no life in you because his, his body and his blood is indicative of that life eternal that I'm supposed to have. So I need to ask myself, where do I stand with God? I want to stop right about here for questions and comments. Any question or comment, because that wraps up communion. Are there any question or comments? Because even though I understand that faith produces fruit, all right, what's your fruit that says that you are a relationship, that you have a relationship with God? Question, comment, anybody? Inside or out? What was that? When, um, when you say, well, when the Bible states for us to examine ourselves, that's not just for clarification, just not on a weekly, but on a daily basis, correct? On a daily basis. Why? Because Jesus said if you die in your sin, where he is, you can't come. So that means I need to be checking myself out. When I learn better, I do better. And when I pray, I pray and I ask God for um, forgiveness of sin, both omission and commission. So when I look at my life, sometimes I just need to stop doing it during the course of the day because I've gotten wrapped up in so many things that have pulled me away from what I should be doing. Sometimes I just got to just stop and say, Lord, hey, then redirect myself and then move forward. We all need to what? Check ourselves. We all need to examine ourselves how continuously. That's why the Bible says, if you continue in my word, because there's some times that I can get out of sync with God's word. I'm no longer continuing in his word. There's some time I've just stopped doing what God's told me to do. I'm not continuing in the word, so I need to check myself. I need to make sure I'm in the faith and then prove it. How do I prove it? By getting back in line and doing what God say do. How do I prove it? By obeying what I hear. And what I hear is God saying, go work. Get it done. So that examination is a daily basis, not just a weekly basis, not just on Sunday. Uh, why? Because everything I've done that week leads up to Sunday. So I got to get Monday straight. I got to get Tuesday straight. I got to I got to get Wednesday. I got to get I got to get my life straight. So that's what he means there. Yes, sir. Uh, say again. I just said thank you. Oh, oh, by all means, by all means, Martin. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. the Lord's prayer was never given to us the Lord's prayer was never given to us his disciples asked him alright Lord all right, teach us how to pray All right, teach us to pray in other words and then Jesus said when you pray pray our father 
All right, that's indicative of, of us all. But the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 was never, never, ever given to us. And that's not the prayer that we utter. And when we pray, we pray to the Father by the authority of Jesus Christ. And when we pray to the Father, the Father is the one who gives. The Father is the one who grants our blessing. The Father is the one who technically answers our prayer. Jesus Christ is that intercessory. He intercedes for us. But I pray to the Father by way of authority of Jesus Christ. So when the Father blesses me, he blesses me because of Jesus Christ. So, yeah, Matthew 6 was never given to us. Any other question or comment? No. Right there, uh, uh, the, that no fellowship and no relationship, that kind of sounds like somebody without the spirit is dead. <coughs> The spirit gives life. Now, if the spirit gives life, and remember, the Bible teaches us we're not to do what? Grieve the spirit. Right. We have, remember, remember the spirit led the apostles into all, all the truth. truth. Right. But when we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we understand that God dwells in us through what? The word. So when I study the word, I'm feeding on God. I'm feeding on the spirit. I'm feeding. In other words, I'm growing in grace and in knowledge. That's why the Bible says add to your faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So when I understand the spirit is in my life because I'm in Christ. If I wasn't in Christ, there would be no spirit in my life. And because I have relationship with Jesus Christ, I have fellowship with the Father. And remember, Jesus said, if you walk in the light through his word as he is in the light, there is no darkness at all. In other words, not some, there's no darkness at all. That's why it goes back to and Decatur's question about examining myself every day. Why? Because there's some dark times that we all go through. There's some periods of doubt. There's some periods of withdrawal. There's some periods of just, just being downright wrong. And I have to check myself to make sure I right myself. It's like a canoe. And you can get in a canoe and you can, you can capsize your canoe. But as long as, there's, as long as your canoe don't fill up with water, you can write that canoe up, and you got to be a pretty strong guy to be able to go down, fetch that canoe, bring it back up to the top, lift it up, dump the water out, and then lay it back down on the water. That's kind of hard to do. I don't know too many brothers. Matter of fact, I don't, I don't know a brother who can do that. All right, there, there may be one somewhere who can do that, but I don't know him. Any other question or comment? So then walking around, Without the Spirit of God, you're dead. But you, you're dead. You're dead. So you're dead. They that have not obeyed that form of doctrine mm -hmm. uh, have no fellowship. They hadn't. They won't. They won't. Why? Because in the reason in that same in the same passage in Romans chapter six, the Bible says, uh, "What shall we say then?" Shall we continue in sin that grace, that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue to live any longer therein? Now, so that established my, my relationship, that when I obtain a relationship with Christ, then I stop the willful sinning. Now, we're all going to sin, right. and we're all going to fall short, but I, I can fall down, but I ain't got to stay down. I can get up. I can repent, get myself right. That's why I check myself dust myself off and go, start moving back with Christ. So when I check myself, I understand that if I have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, that established firmly my relationship with him. Because if I obeyed it, I was baptized. If, I, if I'm baptized, that established my relationship. 
now that I'm baptized and have a relationship, I got to now develop that fellowship. All right. And I get that fellowship when I walk in the light as he is in the light. And when I walk in the light, I walk in the spirit. Why? Because the spirit is what gives me life. You got something? Any, anything else? All right. So we got it. We have a responsibility to examine ourselves, to check ourselves, to make sure ourselves are in line with what God has to say. And if I'm in line with what God has to say, then fine. Come, come rain or shine, I'll be all right with God. And that's why before you go to sleep, the Bible lets us know that I'm to make sure my life is right. <clears throat> and I don't lay down with anger or with m mischief and anything like that in my mind and my heart. I make sure I get it right. Because the way I go down is the way I come up. If I go down wrong, I come up wrong, and I got to stay right with God if I want to hear him say, well done, good, and faithful servant. Any other question or comment? None? If there's no other comment, are there any prayer requests? While, you, while you're thinking, I need you to keep Brother Farrell and his family in prayer. Um, Brother Farrell lost his mother um, uh, Monday morning, I believe it was. And uh, I need you as a congregation of the body of Christ here at Rock Springs Road to call his name and keep his family in prayer. It's very, 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 very difficult. Uh, just a week or two ago, uh, he lost his brother-in-law and now he lost his mother. So please keep the Pharaoh family in prayer that God will bless them and see them through. Give them the strength to be to face the challenges that lie ahead. And I also keep my family in prayer as we continue to labor uh, in the work of the Lord that we might continue to do great things in the kingdom. Are there any other prayer requests? Inside or out? If not, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious Father God, we're so truly thankful for this day, for this night, for your word, for your son, Jesus Christ, who bled, suffered, and died that we might have a right to eternal life. For him who died and gave himself, and all we have to do is just remember the sacrifice and the commitment that he made on our behalf. And we're so thankful, dear God, for the opportunity to have fellowship with you based on that relationship that we established in the water with you. And we pray to God that you go with each and every one of us and allow us to continue to have that communion with you, not just on the Lord's day, but every day have that spiritual communion, that spiritual relationship that will manifest itself on the first day of the week when we physically commune one with the other, remembering your death and your suffering till you come again. Bless us and bless those that stand in need. We ask a special prayer to God for the Pharaoh family you continue to keep them in prayer even in this time of darkness even in this time this challenging time where we know dear god that you are able to give us the strength to move beyond where we are to where we need to be we ask special prayer to god for every member of the lord's church that stand in need of prayer wherever they may find themselves this day and we're so thankful dear god for those that are online that have been following the ministry here at the rock springs road congregation those that are that are tuned in from around the world those that we have baptized from paris to louisiana to las vegas to mississippi we're just so thankful dear god because you've been so good to us bless us strengthen us and keep us dear god is our prayer and our plea and when our pilgrimage is over down here we pray to God that our lives will be reflective of your word. And we'll hear you say, well done, good and faithful servants. Bless us, keep us, strengthen us, and keep us always is our prayer and our plea. Let every heart say, amen. Tonight, we want to thank you again for continuing to support us and being a part of our weekly ministry here at the Rock Springs Road Congregation. Wednesday night live at Home with the Word as we push back darkness using the Word of God. We encourage you to be a part of our Wednesday night Bible class every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Be a part of our Sunday morning worship service at 10.30 and our 9.30 Bible study. 
And if there's nothing else to be said and done, I got to tell you like Dale told Roy, happy trails to you till we meet again. God bless you, God keep you, and good night to all. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.